It is interesting to note that several years after the publication of which is Philosophy by Deleuze and Gattari, which we are commenting now, came up the um, now famous string theory, cosmological, astrophysical theory that seems to imply not only that there are multiple universe, but they are some sort of situated on brains, sort of a slices, um, cosmic slices that contain each of them one universe. And this is interesting because this coincides with the analogy, the metaphor, the diagram that Deleuze and Gattari are proposing here uh, by saying that, well, the plane of imminence, in fact, is like a universe in the midst of multiple universes. And in fact, each of those universes carries the dialectic of the one and the all, the one and the multiple. So there are many ones and this functions as rather a quasi one in a sense. Um, the Greeks called it Logos. The Greeks were the first, I read, to conceive of a strict imminence of order to a cosmic milieu that sections chaos in the form of a plane. Now here we are in, in complete metaphysics, but it's important to know that Deleuze and Gattari are very attracted by the conceptual character of the idiot, which they relate to Descartes also. But in their case, it's more in the sense, the Dostoevsky sense of a need for creation. authentic creation, relationship with the plane of creation. And therefore, a certain, they say, a certain complicity with the idea of absurd, which they relate to creation. This is why, in fact, if we take any moment of their book, it might actually seem absurd. So before we reach a verdict regarding the absurdity of this book and what does it mean for a book to be absurd, uh, we need in fact to complete our journey through the book as if it were a plane of imminence. And therefore embody our reading that's why they say that philosophy is not only a genealogy, but also a geology. It is located in uh, terrestrial space. And this is, of course, a reference to Nietzsche, who, who encouraged his reader, her reader, to be faithful to the earth, in the sense that Transcendence is dangerous because it might induce um, a rejection of our embodied states. And they spend many pages um, mentioning that their idea of imminence is not an idea of imminence to a an entity that would be transcendent to that imminence. 
Immanence is immanent only to itself and consequently captures everything, absorbs all one and leaves nothing, remaining to which it could be immanent. In any case, whenever immanence is interpreted as immanent to something, we can be sure that this something reintroduces the transcendence. Okay, so... This is a long tradition in philosophy since Nietzsche to beware of the transcendent, which gene genealogically uh, is for many related to the idea of the God. Now, of course, one might ask, mm, what is the problem with the idea with God, with the idea of God? Well, historically, we know that the problem with the idea of God is that it was often used as an instrument of power and control. Hence, the um, philosophical quest for a non-instrumentalizable, non-manipulable, non-transformable into a coercive force of power idea of the divine and hence the reference to Spinoza, whom they call the Prince of Philosophers. Spinoza was the philosopher who knew full well that immanence was only immanent to itself, and therefore that it was a plane traversed by movements of the infinite, filled with intensive ordinance. It is therefore the Prince of Philosophers. Perhaps he is the only philosopher never to have compromised with transcendence and to have hunted it down everywhere. In the last book of the Ethics, he produced the movement of the infinite and gave infinite speed to thought in the third kind of knowledge. So the third kind of knowledge is this mysterious um, idea in Spinoza, which is not developed, of a, an intuition that would allow us to be in resonance, in, in co-incidence with um, the natural plane of eminence. They're looking for, and they, they say here something very interesting, is that they mention the possibility of, of a form of consciousness that would be imminent to imminence, as opposed to an imminent, to an imminence that would be imminent to consciousness. So this sounds a bit complicated, but basically it might be a form of panpsychism in the Whiteheadian sense. And we know that Deleuze was very influenced by Whitehead in the sense even of the style. The style of this book, What is Philosophy, is not that different from the style of Whitehead in Process and Reality. There is this movement of affirmations rather than demonstrations. Sort of a, a poetical attempt at reaching philosophical concepts. Right? So I think we're going to leave the plane of imminence um, and jump to the conceptual persona. Um, but let's just conclude by saying we were mentioning earlier that perhaps the concept is a machine and they seem to give some credit to this idea when they write perhaps more attention should be given to the plane of imminence laid out as abstract machine and to created concepts as parts of the machine.
All right. We'll continue tomorrow.